sorry. Well, I guess we're on. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting my Madonna Vogue on. <laughs> hey, Karen's watching already. Karen Devin, how you doing, buddy? He's such and a cool dude. And happy new year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Fred. Happy New Year, everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Right on. Great background you got up there tonight, Stevie. I love it, man. Thank you. Thank you. You know, real quick, I, I seen at the very beginning, you know, the 30-second countdown, we were talking about that earlier. You know, I kind of like it, Steve, if not. But anyhow, um, did you go live before you hit it the first time? I I, I hit it, and then I, I start, Then I hit the live button, and it counted down to so much, and I thought, eh, let's try to restart it, and then it shut off, and I... It, <laughs> I got a I got a quick story real quick. When I went All back right. and did the Monte Casino thing, I I televised from my brother's house, right? So we set everything all up like that. And I go ahead, I can't remember, I had uh, I had uh, like three or four guys on. So I go ahead and I start the show and I start the countdown and then I start talking and I look up and I still had not gone live. Huh. So I had to go back and redo everything. I had to go live, go back and redo everything. And then I get into it five minutes and didn't plug my computer in. All of a sudden, in the middle of my show, up comes low battery. So, yeah, that was uh, that was a pretty good one. <laughs> and we got, uh, I don't know if you know Hank Emery, but, um, you know, I've had Hank on my show. Hank is a terrific guy. Um, he has a field uh, in, yeah, there you go, Preston County yep. Paintball. Good man. Very, very cool guy. Um, very, very happy to have him for a friend. And you see the, the ruse watching us also. Yeah. I, oh, I saw. I was talking to Connor earlier. He was helping me to design the background. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Well, see, I wanted the show to look good for, for you know, the beginning of the year. Start some positive vibes oh, as but, long as you weren't having problems with the with the numbers to two zero two two as long as you weren't having problems with that i'm cool no 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 problem at all <laughs> but um the issue was i actually put that you you're actually looking at four pictures overlaid on top of each other to make it look the way it does it looks great it really really so does I had, I had to layer it but when i test on Streamyard. I can't test it with a two p camera layout because I need two people. So I had, I had Rue in my head while I'm pounding away on GIMP, which is the free version of Photoshop. Cause I can't afford Photoshop. <laughs> so I went with GIMP, but it works great for me. So it oh, looks we got a lot of people. It looks terrific. It really does. And you know, uh, Tina Vasquez is watching right now. So I want to wish her an extremely yep. happy new year. She's Along on the board everybody. of directors of the Allie Remembered Foundation. Oh, uh, very cool. And, you know, I got Keith Kissel. Keith is uh, uh, Kiko! You know, he's, he's, yeah, Kiko man. He's, uh, he's a good friend of mine. He's working real hard with me to uh, put the WCPL tournament together that we've got coming up. So oh, Jesus, uh, Kiko's man. a good guy. I like him. <laughs> it's just doomed now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It just kind of rolls off my lips, you know. Yeah. You know, it's 2022. You know, I tried to be nice and quiet last year, so I'm gonna I'm gonna come out of my shell this year, Steve. Oh geez, you're gonna get louder. <laughs> no, but I, I'm into a 40 40 minute monologue. <laughs> well, you know what? You haven't been able to because we're only four minutes in. <laughs> And I have yeah, the ability I, to mute you, so we're. I knew golden. that would like. I knew that would light you up the minute I mentioned that. <laughs> but uh, no, as for, you asked me earlier, I haven't had the pleasure of meeting Henry. But remember when we did our Christmas show a year ago? Uh huh. He was one of the one of the people that entered a subscription, and I remember it because it was really cool. Yeah, he's so. he's a, he's a really cool guy, you know. The people that I always talk about all the time, Steve, just like you do the same thing, you know, these are people that I consider good for the sport. You know, right. I'm I am into anybody that I personally think in my mind that it is good for paintball. I will will help them. I will push them. I will support them all the way down the line. And, right. you know, it, Hank is one of them guys. You know, he's got a field out in the mountains out there. And uh, he say I've seen pictures of them guys out there playing and stuff and having a good time. And I absolutely love it. I, I'm hoping maybe sometime this year I can even slide by there on my way to Florida because I might drive to Florida this year. So we'll see Okay, so you live at the top end of California. Pretty close. I live in the middle. And he's? I live in the middle. Okay. I live um, by San Francisco. Okay. And he, he's in New Hampshire, isn't he? No, he's uh, um, down south in, uh, oh, my gosh. 
No, I'm lost. I want to say something like Tennessee or something in that area. Okay, because it says uh, HNY. So I thought that was like a typo with New York. So no, no. Oh, okay. No. Nope, uh, nope, but he's a cool guy, though. He, he really, really is. So we got a Facebook user, Pa. You know who <laughs> Connor's that is? making fun of you. Hey, uh, if you mute he, him and the hands keep going, we still understand them. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm half Italian. You know how, how that goes. You know, you tie my hands and I start stuttering, man. Come on, you know? Gotcha. Yeah. I think, I think, so I think Facebook user said PA. So I think that's PA. I think that's PA. Pennsylvania. That's my guess. Yeah, I guess I didn't think it was there. I thought it was down south more, oh. but you know, West, West Virginia. Virginia. There you go. See? Yeah. Right wow. on. Right on, Henry. Good man. So yeah, he's pretty cool. Go ahead. I guess you're wondering why Fred and I all called this meeting. <laughs> Honestly, all we wanted to do was we just wanted to start 2022 off right. We wanted to get some positive energy going, get some positive paintball vibes going. And it's up to everybody out there watching just to keep these going all year long. But we just wanted to make sure everything started right. Uh, unless you you got anything to add with that or is that just a. I thought that was pretty good. You you said it exactly like I told you to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so no. this guy, just so everybody knows, this guy, I'm like, hey, should we have some of those? Nah, let's just add limit like we always do. And I'm like, <laughs> rock on. That, well, you know, that's that's actually how we do our best, you know. Uh, I'm seeing neither one of us can read real quick. Uh, you know, the ad lib works the best. So if I got it written down, I'm like, uh, let me see. Uh, where did I leave off and where do I begin again? You know, Chuck Norris can hear sign language. I don't uh, know. There you go. I think Rue finds that funny, but. I was going to say, how, how's, how's Connor know all this stuff? I, God, he's a I smart guy. Tell you. Man. Yeah. Oh, we got, you couldn't uh, or you don't want to. We got Ryan from Courtney saying, hey, Fred, great to see you both. He yeah, says Ryan, great to see you both, but he says hi to you. Yeah. Well, you know, you, you got to kind of read into that. Um, <laughs> you know, Ryan's one of the guys, you know, Ryan is one of those people I was just talking about a few minutes ago that it that is good for paintball. And, it, you know, he watches my show all the time, but that's not the reason, you know, that the reason is, is he cares enough to, to watch some of these shows to see what's going on. And, you know, those kind of people, you know, if, if they're that curious or, or that, intellectually bound that they want to keep learning about what's going on in paintball, you know, to, to tune in and watch us. I, right. I can't say enough about these guys. And, you know, he is one of the, the terrific people. Um, you know, he, he's a, a terrific guy, Ryan Courtney. I just, uh, he's a terrific guy. That's all. Awesome. you know, I'm hoping I'd like to put him on a show sometime, you know? Okay. Ryan, you heard it from the man there. Got to reach out to him in private. Personally. I don't want you. If you can't remember my name, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he he remembered you. Said, "Hey, my Fred. name's right there." No, he like, said, "Hey," you... <laughs> he said, "Hey, hey, Fred." So I think that he I think he was referring to you as "Hey." I'm not yeah. sure, you know. I, I, but I'd love to have him on his show. And you know, Tina, you know, you know, Tina Vasquez. I don't know if I've met her personally or not. When I was in Colorado. Um, and I'm sorry, Tina, if I did, I do apologize, but it was so many people all at once that came to me at uh, Dynamic Paintball and when I was traveling around with uh, Andy Sturette of the Alley Remembered Foundation. So, Tina, I'm sorry if I forget shaking your hand. I do apologize. I was just on information overload. So I don't He's know if I've snob. met her in person, but I talk to her online fairly regularly. He's a snob. Anyhow, yeah, yeah. I walk up to shake his hand and he goes like this and walks away. So, you know, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to this year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Me too. Deep, deep rest, deep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to this year. You know, last year, you know, we, we made that pretty cool, but it sucked. Um, you know, um, I mean, things came out really good and things started rolling again, especially compared to at the very, very beginning part of the year. Right. So I, I'm hoping that this year things will open up a lot more because, you know, I want to, I want to come up to Canada and play some paintball. And I want oh, you guys I, from Canada to come down here and play some paintball. So <laughs> well, I know that I know that Donna couldn't wait to have you. I'm and I'm I'm speaking on her behalf. I don't but I, I know that she'd probably just absolutely love to have you. Um yeah, I've been and, I've been looking forward to coming because you you talk about that field all the time. So oh I I, I can't even begin to tell you how nice my local fields are. 
Like, first and foremost, I got to talk about Combat Pursuit, which is owned by the Van Dorsers, Trevor and Jeff. And I always forget Jeff's name. I do apologize, but I remembered it this time. Pay no attention to the notes that are behind the monitor. <laughs> but um, it's like an old school, early 90s mom and pop kind of field with tons of woods. Like, it's just all woods ball. Oh, that's cool. Um, I love woods ball. There's a couple short fields. There's a couple of scenario things, a couple little towers. It's nothing massive, but it is so... I, I want to say homey for lack of a better word, but that's just because I've been playing forever and I've known these guys forever. And when I just sort of roll there, it's kind of like cheers and everybody just screams norm. And that's <laughs> probably too old for most of our watchers anyway, but you know what I'm talking about, but it's, oh, it right. has that feel. <laughs> and then when you go to Wasaga beach, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. I can't even begin to tell you it is as good as any field I've ever been to in my entire life. And when you consider I've been to PMR or EMR, not PMR, my apologies. That's a paintball gun. There's too many acronyms in paintball, damn it. There's just too many. It's got to stop. But uh, I've been to Hell Survivors and oh, anyway. Yep. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah, I, you know, I'm doing the, the WCPL tournament up at uh, Combat Zone up in Oroville. And that's a hell of a field too. Um, I, where it's it's woods ball, and he's got so much many other things there. It, it's just absolutely fantastic, you know. And I got Kiko and a bunch of other guys, Dan Ringer. Um, there's a bunch of people that are going up there and and help me because that you know it's starting to count down. We're only like four and a half weeks away right now from uh, doing that. So, and Ryan says he misses the old day of Skyball. Absolutely, so do I, pal. Those were some great great times i i was up there a couple of times matter of fact that's the first time that uh steve and i actually talked to each other um and uh the next thing you know we hook up what 25 years later or whatever something like that yeah yeah so that you was pretty really, pretty interesting you know what really sucks about last year is um i was actually asked to get involved with a reboot of skyball it wasn't going to be skyball but it was going to be at a major stadium and then COVID just killed everything. But uh, yeah, I was, I was asked to give my opinion and because I was there and who I could talk to and blah, blah. So it was just in the very early stages and it just all died. Well, you know, if, if you get a chance this year, um, you know, Tim Schloss is part of the WCPL also, and he's having the final tournament, Steve, and it's in St. Louis and it's at gateway paintball. You want to see a field, you need to go to Gateway Paintball. This hey. will blow you away. He has 110 or 108 or 110 acres, and there is like 10 or 12 different of the coolest, most groomed fields you'll ever see ever. It's incredible. I it really I, is. I don't doubt that, but wait till you get to Wasaga Beach, dude. It's gonna just you're gonna only problem you're gonna have with Wasaga Beach is there's lots of hills, yeah, big ones. But, yeah, see, Tim's Tim's is pretty flat. <laughs> you, the older you get, the flatter you like them, you know. <laughs> well, this this has this has hills, and there's like a UFO on the top, and then there's like a whole like, but there's not all not all fields are hilled, and you don't have right. to run up and down the hills. But there's hills. Well, see, you know, with Tim with Tim's field, it's it's different types of field though. You know, right. the hyper ball is just. He has, I'm telling you, he's got like eight different kinds of fields and he's got like four woods ball fields, Steve, and they're regular woods, all groomed. I mean, no brush anywhere, just all groomed with wood bunkers and, and it, it rolls, uh, you know, it's got berms and stuff through it. Oh, it's absolutely cool. And Mark I... Gong is watching us. Mark, yep, Mark how you doing, buddy? Apparently Caesar's watching us too, because Ryan said, hey, to Caesar Pizzo. I love ah, Caesar. Yeah, Caesar always tunes in. You know, T Caesar's a good guy. Caesar has uh, has the ultra silk. He does a boom treatment, and uh, I got to tell you, he did did my autococker, and it just ab. Uh, yep, yeah. Oh, I got I can't it over zoom here in. too. It won't. It won't focus. Yeah, I got it. I got it over here too. It just Try absolutely this one. rocks. Maybe that one will. Will that one focus? No, no, I nope. can't see it. All right. Well, the camera doesn't like it, but I do. Mine are over on the other thing, and I'm all wired up, so I'd have to get up and walk over there. But it's a terrific, terrific product. They, you know, um, I, I push it all the time. And, you know, I was a little skeptical to start with, you know, uh, about it. And then my autococker went to them, and it came back. 
It, the auto cocker even sounds different, Steve. <laughs> I know, it just right? It's so smooth. And and he boom treated my barrels. I, I use uh, um, Field One barrels. I love Field One. Yeah. And so I use Field One barrels. And uh, I got to tell you, if I break a ball in there, I shoot another ball and it just clears it out. I'm not out there swabbing anything. It just is. It just rocks. I, I absolutely love it. I really yep. do. That's and as far as Marky Mark, yep, there you go. And as far as Mark Gong goes, you know, I, I always say hello to his to his kids uh, every week, you know, because uh, Mark Jr. and Jaden, they're on the uh, the Hermans. Right. Yeah. And Steve, I wish you could watch these kids play. I, I'm sure I'll get to chance. Away. They they are so amazing. And, and they're just like Mark. They come off the field. They are just as polite and 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 cool as could be. I think a lot of that's from Lily. That's that's Mark's wife and and the kid's mom. But you know, Mark, I'm sure has something to do with it. So. Well, I'll I, rolling back a little bit. Um, Tim Schloss is actually one of the people that I really want to shake hands with in 2022. Mm-hmm. That is that is one of my goals, and I also really want to shake hands with Jim Lively. Like those are, those are two people that I really, really want to meet. I know that I've met Jim Lively in passing at various events, but I never actually got to just shake his hand. It was like, Oh, that's Jim Lively. Did you like, (laughs) you know what I mean? But so I just talked to, I just talked to Jim the other day. Um, Jim is coming down from my tournament next month. uh, Cause he lived, he used to live in Tennessee all those years because he had the masters as you well know. Yes. You know, I always say to back in the day, there was two tournaments you wanted to go Jerry Braun's world cup and Jim Lively's masters, because I got to tell you, Steve, it was like going and, and all your friends and family that you had in this sport all always ended up at these two tournaments for sure. No matter what other tournaments you went to, they were always at these two. And I just look forward so much to going to those. And Jim is a, a very classy guy. Him and uh, Sam Caldwell used to do the Masters. And, you know, God rest his soul because Sam has passed away. But uh, these guys were great. And now that He's you changed put that his up, name. I know it. You know that? Now that we get right. I think we made fun of him enough publicly to well, you thousands know who and thousands is. of people. You know who Cheek is, don't you? Yes, the pup. That's correct. Yeah. And you know, I got to now now put him back up again real quick cuz you know, all I got to right, say right, I got to say him. yeah. Yeah, they're rolling a little quick. He he's one of those guys. I sent him one of our shirts. Okay. Okay. And he thanked us. He put it on he put it online and he thanked us. And you know, um like I told you, I sent a couple of these shirts out for for raffles and uh one of them went for 200 bucks, the other one went for $225. I sent him one because of his loyalty. Right. I mean, he watches your show all the time. He watches our my show all the time. He watches a couple other ones that I won't mention because you know. Yeah, yours, a lot of yours, yeah, and and like, I just I just the bunker. There's the there's the command bros. Yeah, you know, and he just he he watches all of them and he helps spread the word about it. So um, he is an absolutely cool guy. Hey, love the hoodie. Yeah, this is the same thing as the shirt you got. Yeah, well, this Passion is drives us. Yeah. So, but I only got one of these. Otherwise, I would have sent you one for sure, uh, Josh. No doubt about it. Oh, I, but I wouldn't get one. <laughs> oh, yeah. well, I'd, you know what? I'd send you. I'd send you a lot of stuff, but it costs like a gazillion dollars to send anything up north. So you know, I gotta, that, I gotta interrupt everything here because Ryan okay. says mass was so much fun. Played with the family there yep. and had had so much fun. Went on uh, and fun well out. Anyway. So, Ryan, did you ever play for the family at Skyball 2 or 3? And when I say family, I'm talking the one with uh, uh, Bon Bon and it was her family. Because it was, wasn't it like stepfather, mother, Bonnie, her her brother and a cousin or something like that, which was called, it was called the family. And because uh, I actually got a picture with you if you did. Because I've got a picture of myself with the family at Sky Ball two or three, I can't remember. But anyway, well, so. yeah, no, that's pretty cool, you know. And and you know, Mark Gong's another one, you know. Um, Mark Keely and I go Watson, way back. That was it, not Bon Bon. It was Keeley. My mistake. Oh, good. But anyhow, uh, Mark Gong, you know, I I'm going to mention him again because I think he's such a terrific guy, and he works so hard for the sport of paintball. Also, you know, working hard with the kids and everything like that is. is 
I mean, I wish you could be down here to see some of the stuff that he does, Steve. And, um, you know, Steve, he, he played on Costa Pursuit back in the day. He actually uh, was a hell of a player. And um, he was a great guy. I put him on his show when we did the ESPN show. And he, he tripped and fell, you know, to this day. This has been like 25, 30 years now. And some people still call it a trip. Some people call it a slide. So, you know, you almost have to watch the show and make your I, – I don't tease him about the trip anymore. I let That's that because, because you I took like a him. nice good – ball at the last world cup he, as i understand it sorry no that's no, no that that was a that was a skilled dive with my face into the dirt you know what i'm working on right now is i'm You're working wiping. on a, i'm working on a new vest that's got wheels on it so when i dive next time like that i can roll into the bunker but yeah well, we don't you know, have we don't they, just, you don't have to work that out they sell those <laughs> at uh at um Oh yeah, yeah. Here we go. Princess Auto. Yeah, you just I, have I, to I, just I, need I, some tie wheels. straps and an and, and an automotive crawler. No, I want the big wheels. They got to be rubber wheels too. I can't be hitting the ground doing with these hard wheels. Oh no, that that even hurt just thinking. Auto about crawler that, you know? and it's it's padded, and then better yet, mm. you can get them with pillows, so it could be like a rolling cot. Boy, you know, Steve, you seem to know an awful lot about that. Have you tried this? I beg your pardon. I said you seem to know an awful lot about that. Have you tried that? Ask me no questions. I'll tell you no lies. <laughs> oh, apparently we have met. You're going. Uh, glad you stuck around the sport. Okay, Ryan. So where did I meet you? Because all I'm seeing is like it's it's Facebook and it's been decades. So you're gonna have to shake my brain a little bit so that I can put it all together, my friend. So yeah, you'll come back on. He'll tell you where. Oh, I'm sure. And he'll probably tell me where to go too in the process. It's all good. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's hard to remember all this stuff, huh? Oh. I got to tell you, sometimes I get lost. <laughs> sometimes I get lost when I leave the house. <laughs> oh, my eyes are still watering a little bit from those glow sticks. Okay. For those, for those of you who don't know, the reason why we started a little bit later past nine o'clock is my fault. I went to get a drink. And I thought, hey, wouldn't it be cool if I threw a glow stick in the drink so it looked like I was drink drinking something nuclear for the show? I thought that would be awesome. So I grabbed this bag of glow sticks that I had, and it was all sealed up from that I'd gotten from the dollar store. I opened it up, and the stench was like this chemical skunk. It was like getting pepper sprayed in the nose. Like that's I I don't know how else to describe it. And I'm I'm <coughs> excuse me, I'm still a little choked up about it. So. <laughs> Yeah, before the show, that's what he was talking about. He goes, oh, 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 it just stunk. Oh, you ever been shot by a skunk? Oh, you've been pepper sprayed. Oh. So obviously it was a, a traumatic experience for my Says buddy. the guy yeah. who won't go out in 12-degree <laughs> weather. Hey, hey. Yeah, I mean, it's it's only been 50-some degrees here, pal. That's that's not easy on us. You know that. You know, and Brian, boy, Brian, I'd butcher his last name, but uh, he said he loves his shirt. Yeah. And uh, he's another... Very, very cool guy. Wish I could pronounce your last name. I'd try it. Ton. No, I'm not going to try it. because I I'll, I'll I got to be it. honest with you, Fred. As much as I love making fun of you, and I do, I, I think know. that that's, I think, I don't think that last name is a legit, I think that is a made up name for Facebook. Mm, now, I don't know. I don't think so. Because it says CZY, CZYN. Like it's like it's Ton and then CZY and then CZYN. And I, 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 I have. I have okay, my doubts. Okay, okay, Brian, Brian, if you get a chance, let me know if that's a real name or if it's not a real name. See, I, I don't know if that that's a real last name or not. Like, and I'm no offense, Brian. If it is, it just looks a little kind of made up. It looks like okay, put in Brian, and it's like okay, Facebook requires the last name. Ta da! <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Let's see, Shane Richard, Fred Wynn, Fred Schultz, Signature Series, Air America Regs, where am I at, made. Did you hand engrave your name into this stainless? No, I didn't hand, you know what? I, <laughs> they asked me for my signature, um, Shane, real quick. I, I did it real quick, and Danny goes, I got to have it right now. I got to have it right now, Freddie. So I signed it. It looked like a chicken with muddy feet ran across the paper, you know. Um, so, but that that's what the signature was. And then they lasered those in there like that. But it almost looked like I did it by hand because it was such a bad signature. Now, my my new signature, now I take my time when I sign it. Somebody asked me for an autograph or something like that. I don't just throw it out there like I used to do. I uh, 
I take my time and, and make it happen. And Brian says, ha ha, it's absolutely real. See? I... Yeah. And you you wonder why I'm his favorite. That's why. You were just teasing <laughs> about that. Come on. Come on. Jeez. But yeah. Uh, anyhow, it's uh, pretty cool. See? Hey, Fred, it's not cold in California. You are in Southern California, my friend. You know, you know, Bud down there, Bud or a friend of mine. You know, Bud, when it's 70 degrees, Bud's putting his hours. jacket on. Friend of ours. Thank you very much. Been a friend of mine for 30 some years. So <laughs> hey, I met him at Skyball too, just like I met you. So Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and Bud remembers me. You didn't. <laughs> 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 would that cost you but anyhow um <laughs> so yeah that's brian's name that's pretty cool brian um we should bring brian on sometime you know brian's another guy that watches all the time i'd love to br bring him on and you know what i like steve is when i bring these people on you know my favorite thing is is one of the new guys i ask him how did you get started in paintball that is got to be one of my favorite things to listen to people how did you get started in paintball because some of the stories are just fantastic. They really, really are. And some of them you wouldn't expect, you know. So pe people get started and, and turned on to the sport in so many different ways. And I absolutely love it. Margong, it was 36 degrees this morning at Capital Edge Paintball. There you go. 36 degrees up in Sacramento. Yeah, and? Yeah, well. Your point? Yeah. I, I don't mind it when it's cold like that as long as I'm looking from the inside out the window. But I don't want to be on the other side of the window looking in. So, yeah, ah. that's, you, know, you know, people go, you're pushing. I go, yeah, big deal. <laughs> I used to be called Chester back when I started playing paintball because, I don't know, Top Gun was really cool back then and it was still in. And I always kind of liked that whole thing. And I, I had thought because this... you had a stiff leg. You know, you only mentioned... the middle one. Well, Chester, yeah, yeah, that's why they call you tripod. Uh, you know, yeah, the you know Chester from Gunsmoke. I don't know, you might not be old enough for that. I remember it. I watched all the old stuff that was out long before my birthday. Oh, uh, cool. Geo's born. watching us right now too. Yeah. Yep. Geo's a good guy. Geo uh, did. Uh, you know, it's really funny how I got turned on to Geo too. You know, I I read a thing online um, from this guy that they one of their friends had uh, cancer real, real bad. And they were going to do a, a fundraising thing for him. Right. So I'm thinking, well, you know what? I'm kind of into this stuff. You know, I like helping people like that. Right. So I called the guy up and uh, he was at work. He's a fireman. And I don't know this. And, and uh, I asked, I think his name was Chris. And I go, yeah, is this Chris? And he goes, yeah. And I says, yeah. I said, this is Fred Schultz. He goes, yeah, right. And I go, <laughs> seriously, that's what he said. And I go, no, no, really. It's Fred Schultz. He goes, you're kidding. I go, no, I'm serious. As I'm calling about the ad, I think I'd seen about uh, you doing uh, this special. So anyhow, we talked a little bit. And then he turned me on to uh, Gio. He goes, yeah, Gio um, is, is the guy that's handling it. So and Gio and I kind of had the same conversation to start with, too. It was pretty funny. Um, but we got to help his, uh, his friend um, very, very bad. He had stage four cancer. Right. So I was so glad yet. Yeah. Tim, that's it. I move. <laughs> I was never. Okay, Ryan asked if I was on the AOL paintball rooms. I was never on AOL, um, but I was on the uh, IRC chats. So I was Saber in the IRC chats. There you go. So. Well, that's cool. You know, Ryan Courtney, like I say, is one of the good guys. Yeah. Look at all these people that are chiming in tonight. You know, these are the yep. people that, that normally watch the shows. And these are the people that are, uh, I think, really good for the sport, Steve. I couldn't disagree. I yeah, wouldn't disagree. I just, uh, I got to tell you, I I feel privileged to know a lot of these guys. You know, I mean, I, I'm i very, very lucky because I started in paintball when paintball was just about nothing. And so I got to, to grow into the sport with all the, the real notables that really worked hard on the sport back in the day. But some of the new people I've met in the past year are just so important to me. It's it's unreal. And I'm sure you go through the same thing, Steve. You know, yeah. I'm well, meeting I new didn't people. Start, just, uh, I didn't start quite as blessing. early as you did because when you were up here anyway, it was kids were discouraged from playing. 
but I had a paintball hat when I was 12, which was 1982. And that's when paintball came to Canada. Like it was first game was played in 1981, which you're well aware in the States. Mm -hmm. First game in Canada was played in the spring of 1982 in Perth, Ontario. Mm -hmm. Most people don't know that, nor do most people care, but I do. So you all have to suffer (laughs) anyway. um, So I've had a, I've had a paintball hat since 1982. So when that finally came around, there was paintball in my area and I had my own car and I was able to do things at like age 19. I went out and played for the first time and everything around here was all splat masters and nail spots. Yep. There was everything was 12 gram. Everything was like com- like uh, compressed air was almost in- unheard of. There was two or three people that had the SMGs, the Tipman SMGs with the stripper clips. Right. But they had sucky range and it was impossible to find like fields didn't have bulk co2 just to to charge the guns up so yeah it's been a been a long time yeah i know robo <laughs> you know yeah i know for a long time i've been you know i played uh against them over in england too so you know robo and i yeah that's that's the problem you know all these old names that come up man you know this is the guys i started with way back in the day too yeah I, the first time i went to england to play paintball. Um, I, I had a friend over there. Uh, his name was Paul Wilson. Anyhow, he was a court magistrate. Thank God, or we would all got arrested. But anyhow, we flew into there and we were playing on an old abandoned World War II air base. And uh, all of a sudden the Bobbies show up, the police, they show up and uh, they were in force and they were ready to haul us in. And uh, thank God we had Paul Wilson um, which has passed away now, but uh, a great guy. He was a court magistrate. Anyhow, we talked him out of it. So, and then when I left, uh, I had a couple of my friends with me. And then when I left, I'm in, we're in the airport. And all of a sudden, this guy comes walking up. And he's got two guys behind him with guns, you know, and they don't carry guns in, in England, you know. Yeah. It's, uh, anyhow, he comes up and he goes, are you Fred Schultz? I go, yeah. He goes, will you come with me? And you're two friends. They take us into this big round it was like three stories tall and it was all concrete and it was round and up on the deck there was three guys with guns they had every piece of our clothing and paintball stuff laid out on the floor all nice and neat and it was all about the 12 grams and everything like that is what it was about so yeah so i had to sit and talk to them tell them what was going on yada 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 so that was very interesting and then we almost missed the flight because obviously we had to repack all our stuff again so right that was my first trip to england and that was uh i think in 88 or something like that 87 i don't remember but uh i went over with tim schloss from tiger stripe and uh uh, jim lively was with us there was a few of us it was pretty cool time except for that incident so so does so does Tim Schloss have his video up and running now? Like his uh, his internet connection stuff? Because you keep talking about trying to get him on a show. Well, he's I'm... got it. You know, um, <laughs> he's kind of got it. If if his son's around, he, he, he his son's a whiz at this stuff. I mean, um, just uh, Greg is absolutely uh, just like you, Steve. He's he's awesome at that electronic stuff. But if he's not around, Tim's like me pretty much. He's dead in the water. So, you know, but, uh, you know, um, Greg's supposed to be back. Uh, I think Greg's on vacation right now. He's in Florida. And so when he comes back, I'm probably going to put, uh, put him on here, uh, pretty soon. And talk Got to himself. But. Nice. Cause he's, he's one of the, he, like I said, the, Tim Schloss, Jim Lively. I'd love to meet Dave Youngblood as well. I know he's old news to you, but to me, I've just, we've always, now, whenever we were at an event where we were both. He played on constant pursuit. You froze, Steve. Uh oh, Steve froze. It Uh-oh, looks like I go. came back. Yeah, you did. Saying connection is unstable. Hmm. But I shouldn't be on Wi Fi. Yeah, mine should be good. Did, didn't you? Isn't this going out also on Flagpole? Yep. This is on Flagpole. Yeah. So, um, interesting. Yeah, I don't know why that happened, but. Who knows? Could be all the snow that we have. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, in a nutshell, most of the wires are on telephone poles. Yeah, I know how that works. I'm I'm from Wisconsin. 
You know, when I lived in Wisconsin, we used to call summertime just three months of bad sledding because, you know, it seemed like it was cold all the time. But, you know, it, it, it's pretty cool. And, and I don't mind the cold weather. I just not crazy about it anymore. You know, right. uh, now I just uh, I like to roll where it's Wisconsin, warm and everything like that. So right on. I just wanted to check, see if it's on flagpole. It is. Oh, it's there. I promised yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. On, we are on flagpole. We are on Popular Unknown. We are on The Expendables. And we are on uh, YouTube. We are on uh, paintball.medias. And there are 40,000 people. And we are also on Twitch. Although I don't think we actually have anybody watching us on Twitch. Well, you know. Surprisingly Brian... enough, we have one person watching on Twitch. Hey, the people on Twitch. You know, Ryan, Ryan says, you know, I ever thought about getting uh, Bill and Don Mills on, you know. I haven't heard the names in a long, long time. Um, I actually had. They, uh, they would be cool to have on. Don was my very first guest ever on a podcast. Oh, really? She's the coolest person. Yes. And uh, Bill and Don, they're still involved in paintball. They work with behind the scenes. Uh, Bill does a lot of um, technical drawings and things like that for paintball manufacturing companies. I don't know if he wants his name out there or not, so I'm not going to say what companies he works for. Um, but uh, but they keep it all behind the scenes. And Don actually has a, a boxer, like the, the dog, the breed, uh, rescue. And they've got, a, they've got a couple boxers. And yeah, I, I can't say enough nice things about Bill and Don Mills. They're probably two of the greatest people that paintball has ever seen, bar none. Oh, very cool. Um, yeah, excuse me, just a second here. Uh, yeah, we're you know, live. You, know, Ol- you know Oliver Lang, right? I've heard of him. Yeah, you know he does uh, uh headbands and everything yep. like that. Yeah. Anyhow, he's going to be on my show. Cool. And uh, um, I, you know, we were trying to set it up. I, I didn't know if I was going to have him on this Tuesday or the following Tuesday. Right. Um, yeah, because I, you know, I got to jockey things around because I've got other guests and stuff like that. So anyhow, he just texted me and said, uh, "Happy New Year, probably can do so." Yeah. <laughs> so I think maybe it might be this week. I got I got to talk to him and find out. But within the next couple of weeks, Oliver Lang is going to be on. We're going to talk about cool. the headbands and everything that they that they've got out. And uh, you know, um, he goes way back uh, to you know he, he's from around here. He you yep. know, he yeah uh, when constant pursuit and iron practice men practice together all the time he was around uh he played with them um do you, you know, know why and, do you know why all of why oliver lang is famous in the paintball world other than his skill what's that he was the first paintball player to make a million dollars a year yeah as a paintball player that's he is the very first one yep that's what i heard i came pretty close uh, a couple of years but uh, yeah that's pretty darn good went to link up with him and Wow, uh, Brian Courtney, you know, because, you know, Oliver might be watching us right now, too, because he knew we were going to be on. And, you know, this time right here, I don't know what the hell time it is anymore. Was it 7 o'clock? So it's 10, it's, it's 10 p.m. here, so 7, 7 p.m. 7 here o'clock place. here. So when it's 7 o'clock here in California, it is 11 o'clock in the morning in Bali. And Ryan Courtney said um, that he is heading to Bali this year. So, uh, Oliver, if you're watching, uh, Ryan Courtney is a good guy. Uh, when he comes over there, you might want to link up with him. Uh, he's, uh, he's a good guy. You guys are both great for paintball. And I like getting great people connected, especially when it comes to making paintball bigger and better. That's my right. whole goal all the time is to do that. Did it for years before. Going to do it for a, as many years as I can now, believe me. Um. One thing with with regards to um, Oliver Lang, every time I've seen him try to be on uh, a podcast, nine times out of ten, I shouldn't say nine times out, of 10, but it, it just seems that there's a bad connection from like internet connection from where he is to where you are. Um, he's going to bring in big numbers because obviously he's probably the most he's considered the greatest of all time as far as paintball players um, by a majority of paintball mm, people. I would debate that, but I'm just uh, saying the player, most people say, that's what I'm talking was, about as a player. Yeah. Right. Um, so you might want to just test the internet connection 
before you announce and see if and then try to arrange it oh yeah well yeah well you know we're we're talking right now uh he was going to try to be on a while back but he went on vacation for like 10 days so he's uh, in well, bali it, where do you go vac- on vacation when you're in bali like <laughs> anyhow yeah they they call it holiday anyhow and uh, he was gone for like 10 days he was gone like from the 10th uh, from the 8th to the 18th or something like that but anyhow as soon as he got back he got a hold of me right away and uh We've been working on it. We've been setting up a time. But, you know, the thing, the problem I have is I try to schedule my shows ahead of time, you know, so right. I get my guests and everybody lined up so then I can knock it down. And the only time I really try to change things, if if, if something big happens and I, I, I think that I have to put the people on right away while everything's still fresh and the paintball is mine, then I'll go ahead and I'll swap stuff around and, and put them on. So right. that's what I try to do. So but we've been working on it. And um We'll get it together. And uh, he, he seems like a pretty nice guy. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to having him. Oh, on. I, and you know, I plus answer, also, go I ahead. I'm Josh sorry. for a second. Josh, just so you know, um, I don't have open communication with Ryan Greenspan. Um, I've sent him a couple messages here and there, but uh, he does his own thing. And so I don't see him on my show anytime in the near future. If he wants to be, he can reach out. Absolutely. But uh, Ryan and I, actually, I don't really, the, the person I talk to the most on Dynasty is Yosh, who is probably one of the nicest guys in in pro tournament I've ever met, period. But uh, I, I don't have any plans to have Ryan on in any time in the near future. Not saying I, I won't, not saying I have anything against him. I don't. I just, him and I just don't really have, I don't really have a connection with Ryan or any of the guys from Dynasty short of, like personally, short of uh, Yosh. And even then that's limited. Well, that's where I'm lucky because uh, I did I did a show down at Field One, you know, that's where Yosh and all those guys, you know, because yes. that's what they had to feel. So anyhow, um, I talked to, uh, everybody uh before the holidays here and we're going to do another show live uh from field one here coming up nice. in the next few weeks so I when that really comes time i'll promote it barrels. what's that i really want to get one of their barrels if you get the chance oh i, tell love them I said barrels. hi oh my god i would love to have them on the show but yeah. when i got um the beast up and running uh andy lent me his black and purple um caesarized field one barrel and it was a dream and a half but unfortunately i had to give it back so the beast actually doesn't have a barrel right now so Ah, i got it yeah it's a it's terrific steve you would uh you'd absolutely love it i don't even know if i've got it even oh i i I love it i was i when i was at world cup in 1919 i'm sorry 2019 um i got the opportunity to hang out with the guys at field one and no, I can't say enough great things about it. I think I love most about that field one barrel is how the inserts lock with the tip. Doesn't show it there, but the actual tip of the the tip of the inserts are tapered. And so they when are. you when you put it in, the whole thing locks so it has a perfect seal. And that's why I love those AccuLock barrels. Oh, uh, they're they're, ter- they're terrific. I mean, yeah, yeah, the the engineering into it, Steve, are absolutely fabulous. Oh, yeah. You know, and then it's got all the you know the different inserts and stuff like that. And you can see um where Caesar uh put his stickers on on my uh, yeah. my field one, you know, because yeah, once it's Caesarized, you get it back, that's what you get right there. Ultra sill inside. So, but yeah, field one is the that's the barrel that I shoot, and I shoot it on my autococker all the time. And my autococker uh, was specially made by my buddy, Bill, Bill Bailey. This is what I used in the tournaments. Yep. And I, I can't even begin to tell you this thing. I mean, we did a tournament uh, uh, about a month ago in St. Louis. And there was a pond right there. And this was at uh, Tory Berguglio's uh, field. Anyhow, um, the guys were out there and they were shooting their markers uh, out into the, the pond. And I go out there and I start shooting it and he shot the paint just straight as an arrow. And I was going probably about 25, 30 feet farther than anybody shooting. And they go, my God, what did, what's that thing set at? Well, we went over and chronoed it and it was chronoing at 272. It was just, I mean, it was still just out distancing everybody. So, yep. you know, I was a mad guy. I'm still a mad guy. And I, I love the mags. Don't, don't ever get me wrong. They're terrific. 
But this autococker, for some reason, it just reaches hey, out there, man. The thing about the thing Ugh. about paintball guns, and I'm gonna say this: there's like, because right now in today's day and age, it's probably one of the best times for gear because everything is so well made. I mean, not everything is perfect. Everything has its its quirks, but I honestly believe that the paintball gun chooses the player, not the other way around. Well, you, you know, get what's up fits in your hands. Go with it. Well, but you know, I was sponsored by year for years um, by Airgun Designs. So you know, and and Tom K, I love Tom K, and they took care of me like I, I can't even can't even begin to tell you. But you know, this this autococker is so cool. And I did a show at a friend of mine up in uh, Orville uh, a couple of months ago. Steve Kissel and I went up there and. Uh, it was at Predator Paintball. And this guy brought in some autocockers, Steve. First of all, they were nothing short of gorgeous. And he handed it to me. And this thing, I, I could have swore it was made out of plastic. It was so light. The way he had it all trimmed up and everything like that, it was by far the lightest autococker I've ever held in my life. It was absolutely amazing and beautiful. So um, I can't remember the guy's name, but it... <laughs> They were absolutely terrific. If I can ever get a picture of them, I'll send you a picture, Steve. Uh, it was probably a, it was probably one of the the customized uh, uh, shock techs. S, uh, SF SFT. Nope. Nope. SFL. Nope. 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 Not for many of them guys. This guy's did it himself. Um, God, I cannot think of his name. It was just absolutely uh, terrific. Uh, I mean, I was just it, talking about the body. Like, yeah, I'm talking about the whole thing. He, all right. Even the body. He he, he did it, he milled it himself. He, he hand they handed it to me, and and it just felt like I was holding my cell phone. That's how light it was. Matter of fact, I think my cell phone might even be heavier. But uh, it, it was just amazingly light. It was so cool, unreal. And Kathy Alvarez just jumped in too, Steve. Yep. Yep. She's a sweetheart. Is She's asking who is California. on the band for California WCPL. I'm free if you need help with anything. Oh yeah, well, I, I'll put you to work. You know that. Um, yeah, that you know, uh, Danny's coming out. Uh, Tim Schloss is coming out. Jim Lively's coming down. Uh, Gino from Belkin's coming out. Uh, so yeah, you know, I, I I I'm privileged to be the captain of that team. It just blows me away. But anyhow, yeah, they're uh, they're going to be coming out. And a friend of mine, Rob. From Fox Paintball uh, back in Illinois, he's got a hold of me today. And he says, yeah, he says, I took and put this thing out on the Internet, Fred. He goes, uh, you guys need to get cards made for the band. He said, you need to have player cards made for the band members. So, you know, that's something that I um, I might look into. That might be pretty cool because uh, to be in the band is, is extremely special. And uh, they're all handpicked guys that have worked very, very hard for paintball over the years. Uh, and so I'm proud to be hooked up with these guys, period. Yeah, but I'm not invited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a tough tough one to get into, I gotta tell you. You know, you got David Bell, he had view loader back in the day. You got yeah, you took and, Andy. Well, that was at the very beginning. Um, I didn't put Andy on actually. Uh so uh somebody else <laughs> put Andy on, but you know, there's nothing wrong with Andy at all. So I'm oh, glad, I love he, Andy. glad I'm he's with me. us. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he, uh, he got in at the very beginning. I think Bill put him in there and, um, or Bud, but, and, huh? Or Bud. No, it wasn't Bud. Oh, nope. Okay. Nope. It was Bill. I, I believe me. I, I know. And, uh, but Andy's a great guy. I'm glad, glad Andy's, uh, uh, with us. Andy's a good guy. Works really, really hard for the Ollie Remember Foundation. Does a, a lot of good things for a lot of people. So, you know, um, it's pretty cool. Oh, now Ryan's saying he still has his super cocker that Seaver built. Well, I don't have a super cocker. But well, I have. Oh, let me see if I can get this off the wall. So this is a Jeff Or custom. That's beautiful. And this, this is actually an old uh, Constant Pursuit gun. Paul Darnborough used this at uh -huh. uh, the '99 World Cup, I believe. And anyway, Caesar completely rebuilt it, so it's got all new shock tech internals and the whole bit. So this isn't this isn't a super cocker, but it might as well be. This is the one Caesar built also. I Caesar thought you said built Bill built for that for you, huh? I no, you Bill, 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 that Bill got you. it for me. Bill got it for me. I sent ah. it. Uh, Bill sent it to Caesar, and Caesar put all the the high performance stuff on the nose of it. Got it. Uh, redid the valve and stuff like that. 
The only yeah, thing, so you know, the only thing about this autococker is, you know, being Fred Schultz has its drawbacks. I, I go out to chronograph a lot of times and a lot of guys pull a pin and turn my, my bolt over. <laughs> yeah, I know. I can't tell you how many times I go up to the chronograph and just think the ball's rolling out of it. So you need to get one of these. Oh, that's cool. I like it. You can't turn it upside down. Oh, really? Yeah, they now turn that's... this one. They turn it upside down on me. I mean, every tournament I go to, somebody's got to do that to me. Now, do I think it's funny? Yeah, because I'd do it if I could do it to somebody else, too. But now, you know that was one of the, there. since you're a mag guy, you know that was one of the classic ways of cheating with an autococker, right? No. Yeah. Okay. So pull that, when you pull that yeah. bolt out, you know how it's got the big hole? Oh, yeah. You turn it over. And on the top, there's no hole. So what they would do is they would drill a small hole on the top and they would chrono with that. And then they would flip it over and they would shoot with the big hole. So you could speed it up. And then when you walked off the field, you just pull it, you twist your thing and you put it back in. And wow. you'd mark it so you knew which way was up and which way was down. That cocker right there is beautiful. This one? Yes, it yeah. is. Well, it's that, it's that one really of nice. about six or seven. Yeah, the, that's, that's the anodizing nice. is called bubble wrap. So I nicknamed this gun Bubbles because... You know, yeah. I got one of the very first auto cockers when they, they came out and the Ironmen started shooting them. I got one from Bud right away after that. And I went over to England and I was playing in England and that's what I shot was my auto cocker. And uh, there was a, a guy over there um, who's passed away now, but he was, he was another friend of mine. And anyhow, he was uh, on the news over there. He was a news guy. So he was taking pictures and everything like that. And he kept telling me before I left, he goes, Fred, you got to sell me that. I said, no, just go ahead and order one. He goes, we can't get them over here. I said, please sell it to me. So anyhow, I sold it to him for what, what I'd paid for it. And then I, I get back to the States and the guy calls me up and he goes, hey, he says, you know that he sold that gun for $1,000? <laughs> and I'm like, you got to be kidding me. He goes, no, man. He goes, and that's a deal. He said, they're even going for more over here. Yeah. I uh, I like I liked the fancy guns. I, li I like the one you just showed. So One of my cool. dream guns, and I won't say which one it is because it'll give it away. Um, but I went and I went out and I tracked down one of my dream guns um, in the late 90s. And they were super rare at the time and uh i was just glad to have it i wasn't planning on using it or everything i just wanted it because at the time i felt like i was gonna decorate one of the rooms in my house with all paintball guns and, and stuff like that and uh a friend of mine said oh man i want one i want that i i, I want that gun so bad like I've, I've always wanted one and i'm like okay well i'll sell it to you for what i got it for um, because it was sold to me as a friend and like if you want it and you're going to use it then i'll i'll sell it to you so i sold it to him for 350 dollars because that's what i that's what, what i it? paid for it. pardon what was it i'm not going to say because if the guys out there watching i, I i'll oh, tell okay. you in the background I'll, I'll tell you in private he turned okay. around and he sold it for over a thousand dollars within a few days and he was bragging was, oh man you can't believe how much i got for it i'm like mm -hmm. yes i can <laughs> what yeah. anyway so well you know story, Keith... oh go ahead long I'm story sorry. short him and i while we're technically still friends are technically not yeah, yeah keith kissel just you know uh, andy greenwell uh, you probably never knew andy uh, andy was the the captain of Navarone, and yes. um, you know we went head to head lots of times and Andy came out with uh, his semi-auto when everybody was coming out with semi-autos, and it was called the Blade. And he begged me to shoot that for him, man. He wanted it so bad. And I, you know, and I almost did it just to help him out because Andy and I were, were pretty good friends. But that thing. It was a dog. <laughs> you know, I, you know, Andy's passed away, so I'm, I'm sure he's watching me right now. So I don't want to say anything too bad about it, but. It wasn't wasn't the best. So you know what gun I want to get my hands on? What's that? Hey, you know Kenneth Hefferly and Zodiac? Yep. He created a semi-auto that is just it's got a all original internal, the way the regs work, and, and it, the thing is brilliant. I've watched hours of video on it. I would love to get my hands on one of those Zodiac. Um, paintball guns because that thing like 
you, you couldn't compete with uh he couldn't compete with the, or the thing so i don't even know if they make them anymore those zodiac markers but man that oh, he makes is, a great he makes a great pack i can tell you oh, that much best pack I, i've ever used in yeah. my life next to um next to uh, unique oh yeah I, I i like uh i like ken's we call him half but yeah I, I like his and real quick uh Ryan Courtney just said, ha, 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 Rainmaker. Yeah. Now, you know, the Rainmaker was another thing. But I, I'll say one thing about the Rainmaker, other than you go deaf shooting it because it was so loud. Oh, it barked it, like a dog. Oh, my God. Yeah. But anyhow, when they shot, they shot good. But you just could not. They just would not stay together. When when Brass Eagle came out with them, they go, yeah, Fred, we want you to shoot this. And I said, well, you know, I said, send me 15 of them so my guys can shoot them. So they sent me 15 of them. Half of them worked. I mean, we were lucky when half worked. But when they did work, they did rock. But uh, other than that, uh, they were bad. The only but. the only um, rainmakers that I ever knew to work well, they ripped the reg out of the back and they put in the um, Air America regs. Oh, the regulator? Air. Yeah. On yeah I, st I still have some, some of the rainmakers here. Um, I got, let me grab this guy here. Again. This guy here is one that I absolutely love. Now, this has never been shot. I've never fired a paintball through this bad boy. Right. Yeah. This is, that's, that was the number one air system, mini air system from Air America. That was the number one on that. And this is a number 13 uh, marker that was made. And RT. just the, just the tip on, yeah, just the tip on this thing cost, them fourteen dollars, and they had to order like a thousand of them at a time. Yep. So yeah, these were really expensive, and uh, you know who can really tell you a lot about this? Yeah, obviously is Sandman. You know, Tim Glavin. But this one here has never had a paintball shot through it ever. I. I love that's the color. Just sad. It really needs to shoot. Never, never. No, I just uh, it was something Tommy gave me. You know. Tom gave me that, and then Danny gave me the the number one system on the bottom, and I just never felt like I wanted to uh, to shoot it for anything. And besides that, I had a lot of mags anyhow. You know, it just uh, still needs to be shot. Nah, just saying, you got to put paint through it. Look at it. Look at a feed on it. Check out the feed. How it goes down and off to the side and stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's, just, it's the Euro feed. Yep, yeah, it's just. Uh, I absolutely love this guy. Yeah. So Garrett Simmons asked, wasn't the Zodiac and and Chris Cole and Suppalock Venture? Um, I don't know that much. All I know is that uh, uh, Kenneth Hefferly, I don't know who he was partnered with at the time when he was getting Zodiac up and running 10 year plus years ago. I'm I'm out of the loop as far as that. But uh, so I don't know the answer to that question, Garrett, maybe. But I know that uh, Kenneth is the guy at the moment now whether he has partners and stuff could very well be yeah he just makes a, a fine pack I, I i have i actually had him on his show he was uh he's a great guy he oh yeah so. i love the cat i love the zodiac pack that i have you know every you know just you look at the names of the people you know brian stoops and, and neb you know <laughs> i love neb uh then you know, I, I yeah i know who he is uh i just uh you know he prefers to be called neb i'll, I'll call him neb I know exactly who he is. Um, BA, we'll, we'll go there. Macho, they all need to. They all need to be given life with paint. Ah, this guy, they this guy got life. They all need to you know shoot. What? I put air in it and I fired it a couple of times. I thought, no, nah, I'm not going to throw any any paint through this thing at all. Period. I just uh, some things are special to me. You know, being the number, you know, the thirteenth one off the assembly line and the number one little tank off the assembly line with that rig. Nah, I just wanted to, to keep it, and I, I'm happy I did. So it's pretty cool. But anyhow, getting back to the guys that are watching the show tonight, Steve. You know, these people, I haven't seen an uncool person on here tonight. You know, all of Kiko. these people, and not just because they're watching. Nah, Kiko's my buddy. Kiko, I know. I, yeah, <laughs> I, I know. Yeah, Kiko, Kiko. Uh, if he's going to fire him out at me, I'm going to fire him back a little bit. Uh, I know, yeah. It's all about the love. <laughs> There's one rule in paintball that everybody, and I mean everybody, needs to understand. If we're not insulting you, we don't like you. There you go. If we're yeah. insulting you, welcome to the family. 
<laughs> yep. Absolutely. Garrett Simmons, uh, Kevin Camacho. They all need to be given life. Yep. Well, anyhow, these are some cool people. And uh, we've gone an hour, Steve. Yeah. I didn't know there was a timeline. I thought we were just going to have some fun. Oh, yeah. We would talk until four in the morning if we keep doing that. So I've enjoyed myself. It's it's pretty cool. I, I'm actually glad we got to do this. And, uh, you know, just to tell everybody, you know, how we feel about, you know, first of all, their loyalty to, you know, watching the shows that we do and uh, to their loyalties to the sport. Because that keeps Bill. everything going. <laughs> William Bailey. Bill, let me tell you, Bill was fighting with a spider the other night. And I'll let her go there. I and, saw uh, the post. It fell in the bathtub and put his foot through a fiberglass bathtub. I thought it was his head that went through the fiberglass bathtub. No, no, no. Because then he wouldn't have got hurt at all if that would have been the case. No, it was his foot. And Fair uh, yeah. And uh, thank goodness his, uh, his wife, Susan, was there. She bandaged them all up. But, you know, I don't know how much you work with fiberglass or, or anything like SD, but your foot goes through fiberglass. That's like putting it through a piece of glass, period. That stuff will cut you so fast it'll make your head spin, man. Oh. So. All right. So we got we got Vincent asking us questions. How do we all feel about the 2022 offseason moves in the NXL? I will be honest with you, Vince. I haven't I been following it, so I don't know. I, and nothing I don't against, talk about it. So yeah, I got nothing, nothing against them, but nothing against the pros. I tend to like the smaller teams, like the D4, the D5, the, the, the families that get together, they go out, they play like it's, it's, it's just, I think it's a little more passionate, a little less businessy. So while I absolutely, I, I, I've loved following infamous, that's probably the team I root for most as far as pros go. Um, but yeah, well, you know, it's like, going to be different this year because, you know, now I, the way I understand it, uh, some of the regulations are they can only have three three guys on a team that, that played on a, on a winning team or something like that. Uh, somebody was trying to explain it to me, and I just told him, I said, you know, I said, that's for the NXL to do. I have nothing against their thing. Um, I'm a WCPL guy, and uh, we're just going to try to do our thing and, and make it good for the players. Um, not that the NXL isn't. But you know they just have a, a a different route and a different venue than yeah, than and, what and we're that's great. At, so, but I love I love watching the NXL. I love listening to Maddie Marshall. I think he's got one of the best announcer voices ever. And that's not paintball. That's sports. I love listening to Maddie Marshall uh, announce and talk. It just makes me happy. So I can't say enough great things about uh, about that. But mm -hmm, uh, the, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the only hey, I don't know Maddie for like. The, the, when I when I went to talk to him, I think I was inconvenienced. I think he was in the middle of talking to somebody else. So I I like I don't really know him. I just know when I listen to him. Oh, I got nothing against. Yeah, I got nothing I think against he's him. Amazing. I mean, you know, Rich Rich Telford works with him. You know. And, oh yeah. Partner, you know, and he's Rich a is, personal hero. Well, Rich has been my friend for years. Rich played on. I got him started as a pro. Yeah. He played on Constant Pursuit for a couple of years. So yeah. You know, Rich and I are um, we go way way back. So, you know, yeah. that's where I'm lucky. Like I say, all the guys that, that everybody talks about, I grew up with these guys, you know, the, grew up in the sport with them. So the only it. thing I can say about the off-season moves and stuff um, is kind of off-topic is that Thomas Taylor just posted recently uh, of Infamous that this might be his final season as a pro, which I think is sad because that guy's just getting it done. And uh, I, th I think... Uh, yeah so cool right on steve well I'll tell you what, buddy we've been at it over an hour i think i'm gonna go kick back uh we may everyone grew up around you <laughs> i love you will <laughs> bill bailey's he co-hosts on my show I, I hope you're healing Man, good thing you had Susan there. You'd probably still be stuck in the damn tub and screaming that the spider is whooping your butt. And yeah, because you know, Bill's not a small guy. And this happened right after Bill lathered up his hair and everything like that. So the tub is going to be slippery because he got shampoo all over everything. And the spider came down and he went to hit the spider, and the rest is painful history. So all right. So somebody asked me where I got this shirt. Um 
I ordered it online from the guy that made it about four or five years ago. I forget the name and I can't read the tag on the back, but I saw them. I thought that they were cool. I ordered one. I know that the guy sent one to Bud Orr as well. So I know Bud Orr has one of these or had one. I don't know if he still wears it or not. Um, but so I, I don't remember the name of the person that got it. Uh, message me in private afterwards and I'll take a picture of the back, but it was a little company in what's the name of that new Island that you guys, the United States bought, um, but it's not technically a state. Taiwan. <laughs> no, 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 they bought you. Puerto Rico. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's no, I there's it's, I, it's like, I, I don't know. It's like a little, maybe it's Puerto Rico. I'm not, I'm not sure. Guam? I'm, I'm a Canadian. I don't give a crap about American politics. Yeah, we know. We know. <laughs> but there's uh, you guys are up there. Yeah. <laughs> Please buy us. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, no, it's it was one of the it was one of the new states that's not technically a state. Whenever you go in a whenever you join an American this belong this whenever you join a te- sorry, that's all folks. Um no, sorry. Take a deep breath. Fred's face making me laugh. <laughs> oh, hey, there you go. Well, you know, you know, when, when, when you're trying to remember what you just said eight seconds ago, um, Neb Nillis said that that photo at Mare Island was pretty cool. And what he's talking about is uh, um, Jim posted, uh, Jim Lively posted a picture of him and I last week. So I went and put it on my site and it was him and I back in the day um, when I, I actually started the Mare Island uh, doing the tournaments and everything out there. And then I gave it up and uh, Sinatra took over and, and made it a field. But uh, I was the one that actually got the, the permits and everything and got it up and going from the city, which was kind of hard to do because it was like a wetlands after that. Now there's nothing out there. Now it's all gone. Now you go out there, there's no trees, there's no foundations, only water. Cause they oh. made it a wetlands. Yeah. They made it a wetlands. So that that's it. But, you know, Neb, that is a very cool picture. And uh, like I say, that's uh, just one of one of many pictures Jim and I took over the years. But that was pretty cool. And the reason I liked it, mostly not because of the location, but I had hair. I had a lot of hair and I liked it then. So, yeah, I still got a lot of hair. It's just not in the front anymore. It's all in the back. <laughs> so lo- less funny, business, Steve. more party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Keith Keith Kissel said it's a to- toxic waste site. <laughs> I love it. And, and William Bailey said Haiti. Yeah, I don't think it's Haiti, but you know when you sign up for a contest and it says this is for residents of uh, mainland United States and Hawaii does Puerto not Rico. apply. Is it Puerto Rico? Okay, yeah. so that's where it's from. Sure. Cool. It's like a ex- I think it's called extreme or something. It's on the back, but I'm all wired up and. So uh, message me in private after the fact, and I'll send you a picture of where I got it. Maybe he still has some, or maybe he can make some. Mainland, you say it takes. I'll take Puerto Rico or the Dominican Republic for 5000 <laughs> I think it's Puerto Rico then. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Keith cracks me up. I get to hang around with him all the time. Boy, I got to tell you. I'm that so comes sorry. Up some stuff. <laughs> nah, he's a pretty funny man. He's uh I enjoy hanging around with him, actually. You know, he's cool. crazy like the rest of us, so that kind of works out. So That's pretty cool. Keith is one of those people that I honestly believe brings color to the world. Well, you, you know, know what? He's that, one of those what... strong originals where it's like the light just is going to dim when he leaves. Well, you know that's, what the I mean? same, like... that's the same thing about Neb, you know? Or yeah. Ben, as you'd like to call him, you know, I won't. I won't say his full well, that's name. That's his given name. Ben. I know what it is. Yeah, I, I know his whole name. But Neb Nilla is what he wants to go by, so that's what I call him. You know, but you know, he does the same thing. You know, he some of the stuff he puts on it just cracks me up. I gotta tell you, <laughs> and and the same way with Keith. You know, Keith will say something to me and something I would have never thought of. You know, and shit, I'll just laugh for hours, man. It's just some of it's just hilarious. So, so. yeah, and then the rest of it's like. <laughs> uh, oh William I'll bet Fred is hungry yeah you know that's what's funny too because I don't eat till after my show so my stomach meat sticks and growl. yeah and, and uh and Bailey knows that too so I'm glad your foot's healing up it was his heel that went through that fiberglass tub oh I thought you had to take it out of his mouth 
Well, yeah. Well, you know, he's not a little bitty guy. He's like 250 some pounds. So, you know, the guy's not a midget, you know, and you get that much going down like that. That's, uh, that's a lot of pressure on that poor fiberglass tub. Believe me. Yep. So. All right. Well, this yep. is our welcome to 2022 show. Yep. I love it too. I, I'm glad we did this, Steve. It's, uh, it's been a lot of fun. Always. Always. Your last one. You know, I, well, it'll be the last first twenty, uh, the first yeah, thing of twenty twenty two. It'd and be the last. It'd be the last of the beginning. And the best thing, although this wasn't your podcast, this was my podcast. This wasn't anything. There was no agenda whatsoever. It was this a was podcast. just you and I going. Let's get together and let's just have fun with our friends. It was a podcast. Sure. Well, what else would you call it? It's a podcast. Having fun. I yeah. to me, this was just having fun. Right on. Well, I had a great time, and I want to thank everybody that tuned in tonight. You know, because this was like Steve said, this was kind of off the cuff. Steve and I just decided, you know, um, it's the beginning of a new year, and uh, we just thought we would jump on and uh, say hi to everybody and uh, just talk a little bit of paintball. You know, the the whole thing is like I say all the time, guys. You know. If we do things by ourselves for paintball, we can do a little bit. If we all work together to do something for paintball, we can do a lot. So I think this year, 2022, I think we all need to come together, you know, quit a lot of this infighting and let's all get together and let's make our sport even bigger than what it is right now and greater and even better in the eyes of the people that don't play paintball right now. Yep, I agree. Like, cool. let's, let's just let's just start having fun lead the charge and anybody that wants to join our parade let's just make this parade bigger yep william bailey says paintball will be awesome in 2022 and it will billy we just uh all work together and we're gonna all make it that way that's the ticket you know people need to understand that um there's a way of doing things and there's a way of not doing things you know like i always say that you can be the best player in the world on the field, you can go out there and kick everybody's butt, and then you come off the field if you're a jerk. You do nothing for the rest of us. You do nothing for paintball as a sport itself. Right. You need to. You need to come out, win, lose, or draw. When you come off the field, at least be cool. If you if you're mad, don't say nothing. You know. Um, I just want to build paintball. I, I did this for a lot of years when I first came into the sport, and I'm back into the sport, and that's exactly what I want to do from here on in. And we can do it, but it takes everybody's help. Just like everybody to watch tonight, you guys are absolutely cool for watching us. Am I right, Stevie? Absolutely. But before I let you go, I have to ask you one question. Shoot. We were talking about Oliver Lang earlier, and yeah. I said that the general paintball community considers him the greatest of all time paintball player. Okay. And you had a hesitation like you had a thought of who you thought the greatest paintball player was now in my personal well, I opinion go back, just you know i go skills. way back before oliver lang you know right. um i watched some terrific guys play you know marcus marcus davis is a great player robo back in the day was a great player bart right. farmer back in the day was a great you know i just know a lot of guys that are great now is oliver good he's probably a terrific player i understand yes. that but i go back way before oliver practiced with us out here Right. The way I understand it, I guess he tried out for constant pursuit. Okay. <laughs> now there, you know, there's a lot of guys that, that you know are still not real happy with me. You know, look at Weiss, you know, Dave Cook, he tried out for constant pursuit and didn't make it. Right. So, you know, there's a lot of guys back in the day that that we all practiced together and played together. And were they good players? Hell yeah. And is Oliver a good player? Probably. I never got to watch him play, but he probably is good. But I got to tell you, I go back a long, long ways in this sport. I, I don't disagree. Absolutely terrific, terrific players. I want to know who you think is the greatest. Oh, I, I can't tell you. There's There would be a few of them. I, I can't say just one person, Steve. Um, there's just so many that, that are absolutely excellent players. They really, well, really are. For and me I, personally, you know, the person that I like watching the most over my whole history of paintball is Lasoya. Like flat out pony boy. If I had to pick who I think my favorite talented player is to watch and what was Chris Lasoya. Now do I am I, I I don't know. I just but the person that I wish I'd seen 
And I can't remember. I want to say it's Marty Bush, but don't quote me on that. Somebody out there, correct me, please. But back in the early days when Marty was auto, really good, uh, when uh, when auto cockers and and semi autos were out there, there was one player that played on. I believe it was on the Ironmen, and he still used a pump, and he was a front player. And from everything that I've heard from old schoolers, that guy was the There's best a couple player of them. ever. There's a couple of Marty Bush did that also, but yeah. I'll tell you, you know, you, know, you t start lumping these guys together. I'll tell you a hell of a player back then and still, and that's Rick Sandias. Rick Sandias. Um, now he played on oh, yeah. pursuit for a couple of games. He played on the Ironman for years. That kid. I mean, even today, Ricky is one of the, the best players that I know. He is smart. He's fast. It's still fast as hell. You'd be amazed. Like a little little spider yeah. monkey, man. I mean, he's oh, yeah. just absolutely terrific. So, you know, I can't, I would never tell you one specific player, but uh, I got to tell you, um, I would have to say, uh, you know, you, you like Chris Lasoya. You think he's the best? I think he's good, but I don't think he's the best. So I, I'm just saying from what I've personally saw, like when I saw him playing for Avalanche, in Montreal at um, this one little indoor field, there was a pre pre game tournament to sky ball. He came out and he just tore the other team to pieces in under 30 seconds. Yeah. And like, he's probably a great player, but you know, like I say, Rick Sandia still does that. I, Hey, I, you know, I, I, and I, Rick Sandias is, he's not quite as old as I am, but he's darn close. He yeah. still rocks. Yeah. Period. I mean, rocks. This I, kid I, is incredible. I, I'm. <laughs> he's not a kid anymore either. Which is well, the best he's, part. A, he's a kid to me, you know. But, <laughs> but he's a one hell of a player, and uh, I, I don't say that because he's a good friend of mine. I say that because this is the truth. And you can yeah. ask anybody that plays against the guy. You know, he goes out there and plays. He puts on a pair of white coveralls and goes out there and plays. You don't give a damn if you see him. You know, he, he just, he just, yeah, it's real simple. I, I played a tournament one time and, you know, I, I always shot the chrome and purple gun. That was my, my trademark, you know? Yep. And then we won a game and after the game, the kid come over and he goes, yeah. He says, uh, Mr. Schultz, he goes, I could see you all the way across the field with that chrome gun. And I said, well, you know, kid, I wasn't hiding from you. You know, I, that's not what I was doing. I was out there playing paintball. So I, yeah. I, I know I've, I've had that. I, I, I used to have this really electric purple gun, which I had to get rid of because all guns were on me when I'd go out there. Um, and actually it was, I found out later it was one of the guns that Rick made because he was working for Bob Long at the time. Anyway, moving on. But yeah, they were like, Oh, your gun's so bright in the woods. It's like, yeah, but by the time you see it, you're already walking off. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Anyway, I, you know, I, I played, you know, because I had Constant Pursuit was a professional team, one of the first professional teams, and we played for years, Constant yes. Pursuit. I used the same gun all the time, always chrome, chrome and purple. Yep. So, cut and dry. So, but, Gee, you know, like guys like Dan Colby. Is, I wonder why my mag is purple. I, I yeah. wonder why that is. <laughs> well, you know, know. Dan Colby goes, you know, he, we were talking about it one day, and he goes, Danny goes, yeah, Freddie goes, I like any color marker as long as it's black. <laughs> <laughs> so you know that that's what all right like henry this, ford so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah all okay right. brian stoops uh bob long was the name everybody knew in the early 90s espn and apg yep yeah they sure did and uh i would but have I'm not to say he was the best I, player though oh he was, he was no, one not hell of a close. tactician he was a tactician but he wasn't you know he wasn't a killer player i took bob on one-on-one -on -one a lot of times you know for uh different events that we went to never had a problem uh, right you know bob was a hell of a player there's no doubt about it but you know as a um, captain he was a juggernaut yeah he was well he had a team too let me tell like, you i know but he had a team you know you're talking about marty bush terrific player you're talking about michael Beard, Trent, terrific player you're talking about daryl Trent, Youngblood. terrific yeah uh, all of those guys you know i mean no young blood wasn't even in the picture to start with Young blood, no, I know, but, but he during... played on Constant Pursuit and went to that. You know, yeah. the original the original Ironman was started by Rick Beard's father. Yes. You know that? Yes. Yeah, I mean, uh, by Michael Beard's father, Rick Beard. Yes, Machine Gun that, Mike, yep. Yeah, and, and that's who started, was Rick Beard. And they got the Ironman name because Rick Beard was an Ironman. He he worked for the Iron Workers Union. Yes. 
That's how they got the thing. So, yep. you know, um, that team was rocking. You know, did Bob help it after he got there? Absolutely. But you need to look at the guys that played on that team. Oh, no. I, oh, I, I know these full well guys, that, was a, that was an all-star juggernaut team. There was a lot. Because, you know, I practiced against these guys every week. And Costa Pursuit and, and the Ironman, we practiced against each other all the time. You know, uh, we we swap players back and forth all the time back in the day, too, you know, and these guys on the, on the West Coast, you know, nothing against the East Coast guys because they had some hell of players there. But we had some serious talent back then, Steve. I mean, serious talent up here in Northern California. Oh, yeah. it was uh, it was great. I, I had a great time. So. Anywho. Yep. Well. I just wanted to see if I could get your favorite player out of you, and you freaking shut me down hard. Well, so be like, why I'd, I'd, have that? To, I'd have to name like 50 guys, you know, because I would never say one guy's any given day. You know, it's like watching a football oh, game. Yeah. You can take a shitty team, and they'll go out and whoop the best team in the world because it's any given day that just happens, you know. Right. And that's the same way in paintball. You know, I mean, um, is Dynasty great? Absolutely. Is the Houston Heat great? Absolutely. Is there a couple other really, really good teams out there that could win on any given day? Absolutely. Infamous. So, yeah. Yeah. There you go. Just that's what I mean is, is that. So to name one, it'd be awful tough. It really, really would, Steve. Yeah. I so, just taking taking nothing away from anybody that we talked about because they're all great players. But uh just to name one, I just couldn't do it. Caught it. Well, I had a great night tonight. Oh yeah, absolutely. And uh, Josh, aka Chico, said that he thinks we should have more Sunday shows. I think somewhere in the back, maybe we will. It's one yeah. of those things that really depends on what's going on at the time. Oh, I enjoyed it. Yeah, I just uh, I had a great time. Nice. I, and I, I always do. You know, I and I, I'm just like I say. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're you're about this much of it, but you know our viewers are about like this. No, no, you were. Great. I agreed one hundred percent. I absolutely love being on with you, Steve. It, it was pretty cool. But the uh, uh, the viewers, I can never never say enough about the people who watch this. Um, you know their interest in in paintball is absolutely terrific, and uh, I wish everybody, not just the people who watch us tonight, but everybody in the sport of paintball, I I, I wish them nothing but the best. For the entire year and i'm hoping i'm hoping that all of us can get together and work together to make paintball even bigger than what it is let's uh absolutely let's make this year our year for our sport okay guys agreed so absolutely i'm gonna say goodbye steve so please well, we'll say everybody. goodbye together because we're gonna shut this down together this isn't my show this isn't your show this is our show so well, I'll, I'll let you i'll let uh, i'll let you click me off first because i'm going to say to everybody very, very happy new year. Um, I'm blessed for knowing all you people. I'm blessed from you people watch me and uh, I'm blessed for everything that I've got out of the sport of paintball. So please, till Tuesday night on my show, Flag Pole Production, seven o'clock Pacific time, please play hard, play safe, play fair, but get out there and play paintball. Show everybody that you care. All right, good night. Absolutely. And I'm just gonna say what he said, play with passion, everybody. Keep your paint dry. Happy New Year.